Okay, so, oh, you know what? We won't be able to go for longer than, like, three hours because I have to go pick up medicine now I think about it. Anyway, so last time, y'all all met each other at the Pick Patrol Inn. You left Jettenberg with Hans, followed Hans until he walked into a giant spider's web. He got carried away and almost died, but you managed to kill or rout most of the goblins before pursuing after Hans. Uh, thankfully, the spider did not care too much to be stealthy about where it was going. He followed it back to its den, burned it down, pissed off the forest goblins even further, who you have learned are the Redback tribe, S managed to save Hans, and then you made it to the war camp of the Silverwood Lumber Company, uh, which is just outside the village of Hagerdorf and vastly outpopulates the village of Hagerdorf. And you just finished your meeting and contract signing with Otto Silverhand, who basically has signed you all into sort of vague contracts, where so long as you accomplish major tasks for him, he's happy to pay you always in silver because he's thematic and doesn't care what anybody how inconvenient it is for everyone else. Um, and that's where we kind of left off last time. So, uh, at this point, as you leave um, Otto's tower, you are back in the camp, and you've probably got maybe just just a couple hours before nightfall, and when you really need to settle down for the evening, especially because you guys are probably on the verge of exhaustion from all the nonsense you've been up to. That being yes. said, as soon as you leave Otto's tower, uh, there is a man who's wearing mostly male little bits and pieces of plate sitting outside one of the few permanent looking structures uh, next uh, over here who uh, waves at the lot of you and says, Oi! Come over here! Are we supposed to be on the... Uh bigger camp map oh yeah you are i yeah. was on i was on the you village map yeah as we will uh, approach i will whisper to verve i believe this is the bretonian boy um i will make sure to uh stay in in the back does this does this human look different than the other humans nope <laughs> okay he, he looks older a lot older like, what, what, is, is this the guy with the flamboyant red, red uh, hounds clothing and shit? Yes, this is, okay. this is likely, okay. uh, uh, not the protection. Uh, I don't know this, though. So, as you, uh, approach, he, he, you notice right away that this is definitely a guy who's probably seen more than his fair share of violence, based on the numerous facial scars he has. He even has, one of his eyes has basically gone milky white due to some kind of damage it sustained at some point. That being said, he still looks fairly menacing. And just he this is a man who's made a life reputation and successful career off killing people for money. That being said, as you approach, uh, he doesn't deign to stand up. He remains seated on his stool, uh, chewing on something. And he looks at the four of you and he says, You here to work? I. Uh, he nods and spits some kind of horrible black looking substance out of his mouth before he resumes chewing and says I don't know what Otto told you but in the day to day activities I'm the one that runs this here camp and anyone who's going to sleep in this camp is going to work in this camp now I understand you got your own priorities and things to do but you work for Otto you work for me in such t until such time that my contract is terminated. So what is it that you four can do? I'm a ranger. I am a wizard. As am I. I can cook, and I'm a good watchman. He nods slowly and says, So the only useful one's a halfling, which by default makes none of you useful. Great. In that incident, uh, he 
points to you, dwarf, and he says, I don't have jurisdiction over dwarves. You have to go see Bronn. I was on my way to him. And then he turns to the half one and he that says, uh, he turns uh, to you, Wrist, and he says, if you had to pick between a kitchen or garden the kitchen, which one would I be better off putting you to? Probably garden the kitchen. He nods and says, you're not the only half in camp. You can report to the kitchens, but I don't want you cooking nothing until you prove yourselves to the master chef. Oh, if there is a master chef here, definitely better garden. He he sort of uh, waves one of his hands out and he says, I use master chef in the sense of authority, not quality. Ah, a sad state of affairs. He uh, orders you to... He, he makes a shoe gesture with his arm without giving you much in the way of helpful advice about where you're going. I can gossip. I'm good. Okay. Then he turns to the two wizards and says, You two can be mighty useful if Otto hasn't roped you in his apprentices, which seeing as you're out here, I'm guessing he hasn't. Thankfully not. Uh, he nods and says... Otto's got a peculiar habit of wanting to find what them trees that have magic to them, something. So you two could act real well as scouts for the lumber parties. Aye, we could do that. He, I, I will narrow my eyes, but I will look away as I do so. Uh, he narrows his eyes at you, Verif, and he says... You got a problem with that? Plenty of other work to be done. Do you have anything besides that? Uh, he frowns and scratches his chin and says, Well, can you do other, anything other than be a wizard? I can track. He, he nods and says, Good then. You'll act as one of Riemann's hounds. I will raise an eyebrow. Who is this Freeman? Uh, he points a thumb at the head of the camp and says, You'll know him when he, sh when he gets back. You can report to him for duty. I will nod. And he turns back to you, Vertstadt, and says, And you will go out with our scouting parties uh, when you're working. Help them find the trees that Otto wants. Hager Creepers, I think he calls them. Hager Creepers, I see. Uh, your name was Sir Rolf, was it? He nods and says, Sir Rolf, you can call me Sir Rolf, you can call me Sir, you can call me Sir Gorbane, but if there ain't a Sir involved, then you're gonna, you're gonna wish you had remembered it. I see. Then I will be sure to remember it. Uh, he nods and then kind of stares at you both for a moment and says, well, get on out of here! I've already get, told you where to go. We will, uh, dash away. As and for we anyone... get away, I will say to Verstat, I'll not be helping finding any of the trees. Oh, right. I had forgotten about your, um, sensibilities. My bad. And so... If you manage to lose one, I would be appreciate, or appreciative. And I will smile. As a quick uh, note, so excluding this session, any session y'all may decide either as individuals, excuse me, preferably as a party, but you can as individuals um, basically spend a week in game time to just earn money doing the jobs that you've been assigned. You're not expected to show up for them on a daily basis. You just have the ability to basically report in and just work. Um, that will be a week that passes in the game world, which means other things may happen or go on or you may miss things. But it's a way to earn reliable money if y'all just need money. Okay. And there may be advantages to working. Like you may discover things that you wouldn't otherwise. And it gives you a massive bonus to uh, certain kinds of checks like gossip 
or if you're trying to manipulate someone within the social group you work in or stuff like that. So um, those are obviously we have to take care of um, Drac in a second, but those are your careers essentially. What is the name of the okay. head dwarf again? His name's Braun. Braun Oak Splitter. All right, so we can go over to Drac now. Yeah, so Drac walks up to the jackass dwarves from before. Um, All right. Uh, many of the dwarves are hard at work, working on some large construction. Many of them are chopping beams or taking measurements or shearing metal. And they all seem to be working on some kind of massive construction. You can see all sorts of bizarre things. They've got, they're pulling around belts and they've got weird looking gears. And clearly they're making something that's taking a lot of effort and is very, very large. And you see over by the head of the machine... I think it's trade architect so could, and can i tell what they're doing it's no it's it's not a building it okay. definitely looks like a machine okay. um you would need trade engineer to like be able to okay. figure out what it is i have like lore metallurgy and trade architect yeah uh those uh i mean you could you could roll for metallurgy about the kind of stuff they're working with but it would you'd have to get like literally you'd have to get an astounding success no. Nah. Nah. So, um, that being said, at the head of the machine and standing amongst a series of papers and scrolls and books, you see two dwarves standing side by side who are unmistakably engineers. They yeah. reek of engineers. <laughs> but behind them, as the two of them are working, you see two other dwarves. Uh, one, uh, and they're speaking to one another. One of them is almost completely and utterly fully encased in armor. Like he is head to toe and at the very minimum male and has, this grommel. and has a, there is a notable amount of grommel about him and he has a massive rune carved great hammer and he looks all business and yeah. the dwarf next to him is uh, significantly older than any of the other dwarves that you see. He has very, very long white beard that uh, is plated very, very eloquently to basically uh, make sure that it doesn't scrape along the ground due to its extreme length. He's balding, he's got a lot of creases, but he still looks very strong, and he, he doesn't look like he's going anywhere soon. But the thing that really catches your attention about him is that his left leg... Um, although it, it looks like a actual leg and that it seems to have picked out details of like armor and all sorts of other stuff, it's completely made out of silver. Sounds on brand. Um, uh, Drac will walk up to, can I tell which one's the Thane, um, between the, the two, um, uh, rotative dwarves. Yeah, with with uh, do you have lore dwarves? Yeah. Yeah. Then um, yeah, it's easy easy as pie for you to tell that the Thane is definitely the guy caked out in armor. But from your conversations with uh Otto, Braun is likely the the older dwarf with the silver leg. Uh, and I rep I'm to report to Braun was what Silverhand said. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Drackle walk up and then um not sure what the traditional greeting is but he will hail hail uh uh brawn respect respectfully all right as you approach uh he some showing proper respect to the long beard okay um some of the uh some of the dwarves that are hacking away and stuff give you a couple of some of them give you curious looks especially like the younger beardlings um, the ones that you can tell are long beards definitely give you some seriously contemptuous looks, but the Thane and Braun both have fairly neutral expressions as you approach, though Braun does just kind of incline his head and wait for you to get closer. Uh, sorry, I'm, like, kind of got a headache going, so I can't really think straight. Um, it's okay, take your time. Bra Braun's, like, I'm just going to narrate what Braun says instead of saying it. He, he's going to do, like, a very respectful greeting to it. You mean Drac? Drac is going to <laughs> greet Braun very respectfully and, and inform him he's here to uh, he's here to report to him. Okay. Um, he sort of uh, uh, he takes out a he takes out a pipe and puts it in his mouth and starts 
putting some uh, different uh, weeds in it. And he sort of looks at you for a moment and says, You're not from the world's edge, are you? From Krakadrak. Uh, he, he sort of, uh, gives a, he raises one eyebrow, uh, before yeah. packing. Dra- Drac will pull up the sleeve of one of it, uh, one of his sleeves and he's got the, uh, the rune of Krakadrak tattooed in his arm. Uh, he, the uh, he, him and the thing sort of look at each other for just, just a moment for he packs the weed into his pipe and, uh, uh, brings out a quick match that he uses to light it and he says, Krakadrak, you're a long way from home. Currently based out of Nkaraza Krak, but serving as a ranger. Uh, he nods for a moment and says, uh, What's your name, beardling? Drak Frostax, son of Rolf. Uh, he, he nods slowly and uh, he uh, says... I'm Bron Oak Splitter, though I imagine you've heard that by now, seeing as uh, you came from the camp. And he sort of nods his head over and says, This is Thane Nordrick Uthrum. An honor. Uh, the Thane doesn't really acknowledge your presence. He, he kind of stares at you, but he doesn't say anything. Um, and Bron puffs his pipe for a moment, turns back to you and says, You have to forgive my kin. We haven't had the most amicable relations with other dwarves in recent years. A feeling my kin can understand. Uh, he nods slowly and takes another puff and says, I can't, I, I can't say I know what, uh, Krakadrak dwarves are famous for. Normally killing Norskins, but, uh, you seem to be in short supply of those, so I'll make do and do with goblins instead. Uh, he nods, sort of looking you up and down, and say, "Says that it? Just a warrior? Also a ranger, or trained in survival and, and map making." Uh, he nods and says, "You might be useful then. I'll put you with the." Scouting parties that go looking out for trees for now. I don't think you'll be much use on this task. From a bit of training in architecture, doesn't seem relevant here either. Uh, he puffs his uh pi- pipe thoughtfully for a few moments and says, "No, it's not useful for this con- this confounded contraption, but may be useful if um." The rumors are right about them Groby getting stirred up. Uh, those rumors are right. It ran into, a, it ran into a small camp of them on the way here. Idiot Ungis decided it was a good idea to use fire against a, inside, a, inside a building made of webs. He gestures to the uh, probably still there smoke cloud. Uh, the... <laughs> Bron sort of shrugs and says, Um... Might send some lads down there to collect some charcoal later if it all burns up nice and good. That part of the woods is toxic anyway. It's all rooted out by Groby. Just makes easy nests for them. I never understand how the Oongi build in this mess. Not good enough to work with stone, probably. I yet they certainly aren't getting better by not trying. He uh, pauses for a minute and says, "Well, I'll I'll send one of my uh, lads to get you if we end up having need of your talents. But for now, I'm afraid I don't have any use for you other than send you out with the parties." No worries. Just just here to learn the land and be useful. Uh, he nods slowly and says well I hope you can accomplish both those things you do hear a few of the uh, other dwarves make some remarks but their dialect of Kazalid is very bizarre to you because it's twice removed from your own um, that you are speaking Kazalid with Bronn but the dwarves that are 
speaking more among themselves are definitely using words and a slang that is very difficult for you to understand. That being said, uh, the air definitely feels heavy and you definitely feel very watched when you're among them. But uh, after Braun finishes talking, he sort of nods to you and starts uh, and kind of moves over to speak to the engineers about some matters. And the thing just kind of... Nordrick kind of just stares you down. Like, there's not... It's not extremely hostile, but you can tell he definitely doesn't like you. Drac will match his stare for a bit before leaving once it's uh, not uh, dishonorable... Or, like, you know, as soon as it wouldn't be backing down to leave, he does so. Okay. You hang around for uh, roughly a minute, just kind of evenly matching his stare before it finally kind of gets to the point where you're probably better off needed elsewhere. All right. Uh, I think... Oh, um... Risk. Yeah, I do. Yep. You find the kitchens. It takes a bit, but you find them. And you're actually in the right area. I'm a genius. Now, you've heard them mention there are half. You heard Rolf mention there were halflings, and you even maybe hear a little bit of it around the camp. But when you get to the kitchen, when they said there were some halflings, they really should have said there was a couple of halflings, because there's literally two of them. I greet them in Mutish. Uh, the the two of them turn, and uh, uh, one of them uh, rolls his eyes immediately, and the other one smiles and says, Oh, look at that, another one! How are you doing? I'm Rist. Uh, he climbs down his stool, and then comes over and shakes your head, and he says, You can call me Maple. How do you do, Maple? I hear there's a master chef here. Uh, he he chuckles and says, "Oh, I'm no master chef, but I cook better than any of these uh, uh, these <laughs> long legged long legged long legged children do. They don't know the taste of two spices from dung." Funny story that. So, my uncle Alex once tried to test something like that out. It didn't work out so well for him. Turns out they can taste a slight difference. <laughs> he nods and says, uh, Maybe some of them, but I doubt this lot. In any event, are you here as a cook? Uh, I'm not to cook till I've proved I can cook, but to guard the pantry, as it were. Oh, to guard the pantry. Aren't you that all fancy then being a great warrior? Only by comparison. Uh, to the less great. He chuckles again, and the other halfling is dutifully ignoring you and continuing to prepare that evening's dinner. And he says, Well then, let's put you on the cook line and see what you're capable of. Alright, let's see how this works. Uh, I am ready for my 100 roll. Cool. Uh, this will be an extended check because you're going to help prepare dinner. Um, you'll get uh, you'll get three checks, and your goal is to make it to a success uh, success level of four. Okay. Is this an average cooking check? Challenging? It is. Uh, it is average. All right. So should be pretty easy. <laughs> Awesome. Killed it. We'll come back to you in a minute. All right. All right. Uh, You're not going to let him see if he can't get to Yeah, I, I was going to see, I was going to say, let him see uh, how good he can actually get it. Uh, I mean, if he, yeah, go ahead. Go, go, go ahead and roll one more time. Regardless of the roll, we'll come back to it. 11 success almost double. Pretty, pretty nice. All right. So, uh, Verv and Vertstat, I assume you all want to find the surgeons. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, do Okay, so after talking around camp for a little while, 
you if you want you can spend a gossip check to try and learn a little extra info but you don't need to um you can find them pretty easily just by asking I will, around i will attempt a gossip check can aztec aid me in that or uh, if he has it trained yes i have gossip yeah so sure you can get plus 10 for that and it'll be average so plus 20 <sighs> frick i did this all this on firefox which doesn't let me roll. Why? I have to. <laughs> why? Why? Why you do this every time? <laughs> this is only the second time, but I'll be right in. I mean, you're two for two in this campaign, though. Well, I'm not used to not using Firefox for this. I'm really looking forward to all the comments I know I'm going to get about my uh, imperial, so technically German mercenary captain having a southern accent, but whatever is the best I can do. <laughs> I don't have European accents, I only have southern accents. I was about to say, he's just, just say he's like the very... Just, uh, just, tran just translate all of it to German, including the accents. <laughs> yeah. The language and the accents translate over, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Scandinavian dwarf with whatever the fuck my accent is, so... Okay, uh, yeah, that's plenty good. So... <laughs> Um, Verve, you, uh, you, after talking around with people, which, uh, the moment word kind of starts to get around, like, once the people you're talking to realize you're a girl very quickly based on your voice, you notice that they seem to be much more amicable than they were when you initially approached them. Um, that being said, whether or not you're an elf being a concerned hasn't seemed to weigh on many of their minds just yet. Everyone seems a little too concerned about there finally being a little bit of diversity in the camp, for better or worse. But uh, after a few pleasant, uh, if slightly uncomfortable conversations, you basically learn that there are two doctors in the camp. And the good news is they are fairly well they are fairly skilled when it comes to patching people up and making sure they're healthy and good to go the bad news is that they tend to be very very pricey and it's kind of a common habit for everyone's sanity in the camp to usually try and bring them something that they will find interesting or uh at least something to barter with on top of coin that way they don't just rob you blind anytime you try and get fixed up so with that success can i gain information on what they might find interesting they are yes they they are just kind of collectors of bobbles um or anything anything that they think or can be convinced is rare then they will be interested in even if it's not actually rare, it's just a matter of there. There are rumors that there is a particularly silver tongued guardsman who has gotten away with cheap visits just through telling them interesting stories or uh, some claim to have performed for them. Some people claim to have given them something that was actually garbage, but they convinced them it was great. Um, there are a lot of myths but what's true and what's not, it seems to almost be a bragging point among the soldiers of the Bloody Hounds to have gotten away cheaply from the the Doctor Brothers. Are they actually brothers? Nobody knows. Okay. But uh, that's what everyone calls them. Do they get along well with each other? Supposedly. Okay. There are conflicting <laughs> reports. Um, and where are they located? They are located over here. Okay. I will point to over there. You do hear that it's rare to find both of them there at the same time. Usually there's one or the other. Where does the other one usually go? Where Do they like make rounds? Essentially, yes. Okay. There's, there's always one on staff. Cole, do you tell me all of this? Yes. Well, I, I assume you're going to be like right there as I'm you know, walking, trying to figure out... Well, yeah, you helped him with the check, so you would have had to be yeah, present. Yeah. That, that's true. Um, Verstat will say, I may have an idea if we can get our hands on just a little bit of alcohol, like some wine or something like that. Um, I'll raise an eyebrow and, and 
inquire as to what you have in mind. Um, I will explain to Verve that I am going to cast Purify Water on like a wineskin and turn wine into water. I do not believe that that will be very interesting to them because wine is a bit better than water. That's true, but they're surgeons. What if they're just in it for the, the tail? I turned wine into well, water. I, I see the dazzle. I will kind of roll my eyes and nod. <laughs> I, I love how it's starting to become, whatever the said goes, I have an idea. Everyone's like, all right, first off, what is this idea? 